Section 6.1 Scatter Pots Explanatory and Response Variables Definition In a study about whether a variable x explains a variable y. Remember, we learned the rectangular coordinate system. We have a two variables, one variable on x and one variable on y. From here, we call x the explanatory variable or independent variable. So x, that will be independent variable. And for the y, we call this as the response variable. And for the y, this is depending what you have on your x. Means like the variable of the x will be affect the variable on the y in here. So if I give you guys an example, I have a two variables. You have to think about it, which one that will be the expandatory variable, which one will be your response variable. Look at this example. For each situation, identify the expandatory variable and the response variable. Let W be the number of minutes some shirts are washed, and let P be the percentage of things that are removed. So we have the two variables in here. One is the W and one is the P. You have to think about it, which one is going to be affect and other one. So which one will be your expansionary variable and which one will be your response variable. So we could think about it, the number of the minutes some shirts are washed it will be affect the percentage of the things that are removed. If we wash the shirt longer, we may remove more things on the shirt. So we could say the study could test to what extent W, the number of the minutes, explains the P, the percentage of the things. So the W here will be your explanatory variable. And then the P will be the response variable. Number two, let P be the percentage of the people who think that a man of height H inches is attractive. So we have a P and H. Which one will be the expansionary variable? Which one will be your response variable? Okay, so for this one, what extent the height of a man affects the percentage of the people who find the man attractive? So we could say H here, the height of the H will be the expansionary variable. And then the P here, that will be the response variable. It all depends on your H in here. A car is traveling at speeds in miles per hour on a dry asphalt road and the brakes are suddenly applied. Let D be the stopping time distance. So again think about it will be the speed S is the expansionary variable or will the D be the expansionary variable. So you can think about it, the traveling speed will be affect the stopping distance, right? The S, the speed will be affect the stopping distance. So the S in here will be the expansionary variable, and then the D will be the response variable. So the D called dependent variable, depending on your speed in here. Okay, interpreting order pairs. Remember when we learned the rectangular coordinate system, we have the order pair. The order pair for the first one, this is represent your x. The second one here, this is represent your y. And for the statistic, the x in here, this is your expansionary variable. And for the y, this is will be response variable. So look at this example. Let W be the weight in pounds of a person, and let H be the person's height in inch. 
What does the other pair, 66, 142, mean in this situation? So first, think about it. The W and the H in here, which one will be your expansory variable? Which one will be your response variable? Similar idea with the first three example. So actually, we could think about it. A person's height will be affect a person's weight, right? So if you are taller, you may be heavier. So the H in here, that will be your expansory variable. And then the W here will be the response variable. Since the H here, this is represent your X. So H will be equal to 66 inch. And then the W here, that will be the response variable. So W will be equal to 142 pounds in here. So what does it mean this situation? A person's height 66 inch and the person's weight will be 142 pounds. Okay, number two, let's see be the amount of caffeine a person ingests daily. And let S be the mean number of hours the person sleeps per night. What does the other pair 300,7 mean in this situation? So first, you have two variables, the C here and also the S. Which one will be your expansory variable? Which one will be your response variable? So the mean number of hours you sleep, it depends on how much amount of the caffeine you consume, right? If you drink more coffee, you consume more caffeine, you may have less number of hours of sleep. So the C in here, that will be the expansory variable. And then the S here, that will be the response variable. And we look at this other pair. We have a 307. So you know C will be the expansory variable. So you know C will be equal to 300 and S that will be equal to 7. An individual ingests 300 mg of caffeine daily and sleeps an average of 7 hours per night. Write it in complete sentence. Coulombs of table and axis of coordinate system. Assume that the authentic situation can be described by using two variables. For the tables, the values of the expansory variable are list in the first column and the values of the response variable are list in the second column. Every time when you guys see the table, they do have a two set of the data. On the first column, this is represent your expansory variable. Okay, we use the x to represent it. And then the second column here, this is represent your response variable. And we could use the y to represent it. So for coordinate system, the values of the expansory variable are described by the horizontal axis. And the values of the response variable are described by the vertical axis. When you have the graph in here, the x axis is always using the expansory variable. And then the y here, this is always the response variable. Look at the example. The mean ticket price for the Super Bowl are sold in the table for various years. Let P be the mean ticket price in dollars and let N be the Super Bowl number. So we have the table in here. And remember we say the first column here, this is your expansory variable and this is belong to your X axis. So this guy, that will be on your horizontal axis. And then the second column here, this is response variable. And this is equal to the y axis that will be using on your vertical axis in here. 
But here they just let the P be the mean ticket price, and then N will be the Super Bowl number. So here this is using the N. Mean ticket price will be using the P in here. So now we construct a scatter plot. Make sure when you guys construct a graph, you need to title. My title will be the Super Bowl number as the mean ticket price in here. And then label the Y axis, label the X axis. So the first column here, this is going to belong to my X axis. And then I could see the number are starting from 1 until 48 here. So I will be using like 5, 10, 15 in here. And then the y axis, the smallest is going to be 12. The largest one is going to be 1,500. So I will just use like 100 in here 100, 200, 300 until 1,500. And for each data, this is what represent your coordinate. This is your order pair. 1 and 12. So this is means you're going to go to the right 1 unit, go up to the 12 unit. So somewhere like here. Second order pair, 5 and 15. So go to the right 5 units and go up 15 units. Okay, so 1 dot will present 1 order pairs. And this is how you guys construct a scatter plot. For the Super Bowl described in the table, which Super Bowl had the highest mean ticket price? What was that price? So you could look at the data or you could look at the scatter plot. Which one will be the highest mean ticket price? So look at the mean ticket price in here. The highest number will be 1,500. Right, 1,500, and this order pair will be referred to the 48 Super Bowl number, 48. Describe any patterns you see in the price. Either you could just look at the data, okay, starting from here, you could see 12, 15, 20, 14, this is keep increasing, or you could look at your scatter plot. This is my scatter plot. You could see my data is gonna be going on your end here, starting from zero is gonna be going up, and also the y axis as well, starting from 12, 15, 20, 40, and it's gonna be going up. So you could see. From the table or the scatter plot, we see that the mean ticket price has increased. Positive and negative association. Association means these two variables are related to each other. Some books using the association, some books use the correlation, but they are talking about the same thing. So I have the scatter plot here. This is my scatter plot. On my x axis, this is going to be my expansionary variable. On my y axis here, that will be the response variable. So you can see if I'm increasing the expansionary variable, my response variable is also is increasing. Okay, so this we go up here, we're gonna go up in here also. And then this is my scatter plot. If I could draw a line in here, okay, I could draw a straight line in here, and all those points will be around this straight line. We call there is a linear correlation. Okay, there is a linear correlation. Or you could say that is a linear association. And here this is called positively correlated. Okay, positively correlated. So how do I know if this is going to be positive correlation or negative correlation? It always depends on the line in here. Remember when we learned about the rectangular coordinate system, 
we learn about the slope. If the line is gonna be horizontal, remember what is the slope? Slope will be equal to zero, right? M equal to zero. If I going up like this way, what is the slope? The slope will become positive. This is gonna be positive slope. If this is increasing. If we have vertical line in here, the slope we call this is gonna be undefined. How about this one? If we going like decreasing, the slope is decreasing, we will have a negative slope in here. So for my picture here, my slope is gonna be increasing. So this is gonna be positive slope. So we say there is a positive linear correlation. Okay, positive because of the slope and linear because we draw the straight line in here. And correlation because all those points is going to be around the straight line in here. Okay, again, we have the scatter point in here. We could draw the straight line in here and all the points is going to be around the straight line. So we believe that there is a linear correlation. Now, we need to figure out this is going to be positive correlation or negative correlation. Remember the slope? The slope is decreasing, right? So when the slope is decreasing, we have a negative slope. So we know there is a negative linear correlation. Okay, example. Let n be the number in millions of American adults who practice yoga at T years in 2010. In 2013, 24 million American adults practice yoga. Express this has all the pair. So first, we have two variables. First one, that will be the T years. Second one, that will be the number of American adults who practice yoga. So we have two variables in here. We need to think about it. Which one that will be your expansory variable? Which one that will be your response variable? So we could think about it, the number of the years will be affect the number of the American adults who practice the yoga. So T in here, that will be the explanatory. And the number of the people here, that will be your response variable. Okay. And then we let T years since 2010. So means at 2010, T will be equal to zero. Right now is 2013. So what is your t equal to? We could just subtract it, right? We could do 2013 minus 2010, which is going to be 3. And the n here will be equal to 24 in millions. Okay, so now we write it as an order pair. We're going to put like 3, 24. The 3 here will present the t years. And then 24 here will present 24 million American adults practice yoga. Let G be the number of guns found among airline passengers at United States Airport in the year that is T years since 2000. What does the order pair mean in this situation? So we have a two variable. One is the G, the number of guns. And the second variable will be the years, T years, okay? And they say T years since 2000. That means when the year 2000, T equal to zero. So first think about it. Which one will be your explanatory variable? Which one will be your response variable? So we could think about it. The year will be at first the number of guns found in the airline passenger, all right? So the T affects the G in here. So the T will be your explanatory variable. And then the G, the number of guns, will be the response variable. So the first 14 here, this is represent your T, okay? T years represent your T. 
second one, the 2,122, this is represent your G in here. Okay, the number of guns they found. It. Okay, now we're gonna figure out the T equal to 14. When T equal to 0, that's a 2,000. Why now T equal to 14? So which year is gonna be? One more time, when T equal to 0, that will be 2000. Why now T equal to 14? What year is gonna be? You could add it up in here, right? 2000 plus 14, so that will be the 2014 in here. So this is means there were 2,122 guns found among airline passengers in 2014. Example, constructing a scatter port and announcing the association. Atlantic City gambling revenues are sold in the table below for various years. Let R be the annual revenue in billions of dollars at T years since 2005. So we have the table in here, we have the number of the years, and also the revenue in billions. So remember for the first column, we consider this is going to be our explanatory variable. Second column here, that will be the response variable. And they also let R be the annual revenue since 2005 this is means when the year 2005 t equal to zero okay one more time year 2005 t equal to zero so why now we have the year 2008 so think about it what is gonna be your t equal to 2005 t equal to zero 2008 that will be at three years, right? So t will be equal to three. And 2009, t will be equal to four. So first, we list the values of t and r in an other table. 2008, that will be t equal to three. We do have a 4.7 billions. Okay, so we just keep Working on it, 2009 will be t equal to 4, 2010, that will be t equal to 5. The number of the revenue doesn't change in here. So why right now we're going to base on this table to construct a scatter port. Okay, I want you guys try to do it by yourself. Make sure when you construct the scatter port, you do have the title, you label the x-axis, and label the y-axis. Don't use the 2008, 2009, 2010, okay? Use the T, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, you should have the scatter port look like this. First, we have the title. Label the x axis. This is the year since 2005 because we let t equal to 0 since 2005. And this is going to be my r here for present your revenue. And then we have the first coordinate 3 and 4.7. So we go to the right 3 unit, go up to 4.7 unit. Second coordinate 4 and 4.0. So go to the right 4 units, go up four units also okay so do it one by one construct the scatter port by hand in here okay number two determine whether the association is negative positive or neither so we are talking about the correlation first think about it can you draw a straight line here and the points is around this straight line? Yes, right? I could draw a straight line in here. All those points are going to be around the straight line. So we know that there is a linear correlation. Or you could say there is a linear high association. Now, we're going to determine this is going to be positive or negative. 
Look at the slope here. The slope is increasing or decreasing? Decreasing, right? We're going to be going down from here, okay? Decreasing. When we have a decreasing slope, means that will be the negative slope. So we know that there is a negative correlation or there is a negative linear correlation. That's it for the session 6.1.